no problem. But just understand what we're doing in terms of death. It's all related. When you take away the quest from the question mark of life, and life is constantly a question. When we take away the quest, we do not enter the path and the portal of evolution. Because to evolve means to be in, it, in an eternal quest, in the eternal question, question. So this is what we need to stay in to understand how to live life the most powerfully, the most bountifully. And here seems a paradox, how to live in the question and be most powerful. Because Western culture has told us that to be most powerful, you have to know. But Eastern mysticism understands <laughs> that to, to, to think you know is not to be powerful, is to be an idiot, is to be a fool, is to be ignorant. Because the truth of the truth of reality is that it is forever a question mark. And therefore you have to forever be in quest. But the Western mind, because the Western mind wants to know and control and me mechanize and roboticize and automatize everything because there's a shortcut for everything. The Western mind has taken us further and further and further away from nature, right? It's taken us further and further away from the earth. And the earth is what we come from, from the mud, from the dust, from the soil, from the worms, from the bacteria, from the seedling. That is who we are. The roots are there. Where are the roots in all of nature? In the earth. Look how far we are from earth by me mechanizing, by creating urbanization and, and robotic ways of living. We are further and further away from the earth. And by going further and further away from the earth, because when you live close to the earth, you are at its mercy. To be at its mercy means you're forever in the flux of the creative genesis of the earth herself. Earth is creative potential constantly. It is constantly birthing itself, yes? Earth is constantly birthing, but that means Earth is constantly dying. It is constantly in the unknown. It's constantly moving. There is no, there is no paralysis in the Earth. It's constant flux, constant movement, constant transformation, constant quest, because we don't know when you shake that tree, what leaves will fall? We don't know because this is the nature of life. We don't know. It's constantly a question mark. Our fear of living in the question mark, our fear of living in the quest of the question mark is the fear of death. And so we create a life of artifice and artifact and superficiality and deceit because we pretend to our children and to ourselves that we know, that we're certain, we can predict. We not only have done that, we've also created that we know the other worlds and we've created a whole, a whole other, other systems beyond what we can ever know because the unseen and the unknown is too terrifying for us. Yet our bodies, our human bodies with 50 trillion cells that generate every other two days or four days or weeks. Our, our body is generating and regenerating all the time. Red blood cells take, I don't know, two weeks to re completely regenerate. White blood cells take four weeks. What that means is your skin is not the same. It just looks the same in some ways. The old tissues look the same, but a lot of our skin is new. But for the skin to be new, the skin has been dying. Yeah, but you don't mind that as long as it looks the same. But in death, final death of the physical, nothing looks the same anymore. And the body truly decomposes back to earth. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. But the real spiritual meaning of that is you are always, always ashes, always dust. And this physical form that you twirl your hair, you put your little blush, you wear your tie and your suit. This is all, you know, mockery of who you really are. It's all a trickery, a charade, a disguise. This is not who you really are. Who you are is poop and pus and gore and blood. It's just covered. It's just covered. And because we don't see it, the unseen, 
we just don't want to don't want to believe it we only want to go with what we see but this is not who we are you and i are not our clothes <laughs> but yet we define each other by our clothes you and i are just the same at the end of the day 99% of us are just the same the 1% change in the dna that give you you know lighter skin than me and lighter hair than me whoopee at the core we are one with all of life we are the same as every other animal and especially the bonobo especially the chimpanzee especially that subset of primate we are animal but we have covered ourselves with all this to then believe we are all this but this is not who we are so if we understood our true nature that lies beneath this cover up we would not be in constant terror of death we are ash we are dust we are pus we are virus we are bacteria why does bacteria live forever what which is the most resilient entity on earth probably the virus and the bacteria so this one this coronavirus has taken us for a sixer right has taken us for a spin why because we want prepared to be lesser than a virus we thought we were more dominant than a virus but this virus has shown us for the first time in our lives that none of us can say what will happen in a month not even in a week for the first time we don't even know whether we will live or die to see tomorrow to me this is an epiphany to me this is a wake up call to many others it's depressing i understand it's depressing because we have not prepared we didn't go for la mas classes to understand the meaning of death death is constant it's happened right now right now your cells are dying right now you just don't see it and because you don't see it you don't think it's happening that is our illusion but as death happens so does life it is constantly a chain of cause and effect so your final form death of this form is not the end of your life it's your end of your form based life in this form yes but what happens now is not bomb finish now i also will not tell you the soul rises with wings and joins other souls of your ancestors up in the sky and they're welcoming them with like a warm embrace i know you want me to but i can't tell you that because i don't know and i'm okay not knowing what i do know is that the body will decompose you may not like that word but that's okay because it becomes compost for the soil i am okay with that you may not be okay you want to be flying in the sky going to meet your great 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 grandmother i understand i hope that happens but i don't know so i can't say it does and i'm just being tongue in cheek yeah but really we don't know whether it does okay we don't know who we're going to meet there so don't try to fly too fast at least go slow watch out you don't know what's out there don't make up your own story that and who said your great 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 grandmother wants to meet you yeah maybe she's having some good sex somewhere you know like don't disturb her all i'm saying so the com i know do know that everything transforms energy transforms so your body decomposes the the word that we don't like sorry but it becomes compost food for the next are we not uh, uh, are we not supposed to be food for other creatures are we only supposed to eat other creatures why can't we be food for the next and in this beautiful way constantly transform because our ego doesn't like it our ego doesn't want to just be food for the grasshoppers and the beetles we're like huh all my work my legacy and i'm just going to be that right no i want to reincarnate into mozart and i want to be the next be- beethoven huh okay because you think that that is who you are you know to play an instrument well or to look pretty that's who you are and as long as that's who you are you will constantly resist that instead of understanding okay i can be foolish in my ego while i'm living from ashes to ashes in between i can be a fool no problem but it doesn't take away the fact ashes i am dust i am so sooner or later we want later we want really later but it doesn't matter because the universe doesn't look at longevity the way we do we think longevity means a good life we like can i please die after 80 and then after 80 somehow we're like he had a good life how do you know he had a good life he just had a long damn life maybe he was a miserable sob his whole life oh but he had a long life no length doesn't make a difference to the universe you know if you shake a tree you could get the green leaf 
and the brown leaf, right? Do we say, oh, sorry, green leaf, go back, let's paste it back on the tree? No, the, leaf, the tree sheds it because some green go and some brown. But we were like, no, only the brown should go because a long life is a good life. Who said? A life is a life is a life. It will go when it will go. This is the harsh truth about life. But we want to live, but we don't want to understand life. Uh, to, to live, we must understand the nature of life. And the nature of life is death. How to, how to sugarcoat this? It's brutal. It's brutal. No one wants to die, number one. No one wants their loved ones to die. Why? Because we're deeply attached. We're deeply attached. Of course, no one wants it. But what to do? It's part of this obscene story called life. We're here. As long as we're here, we're going to die. Okay, I'm so sorry. You want to live? You have to die. They go hand in hand. Now, how to prepare for it with beauty? How to prepare for it so you don't become, you know, nihilistic and apathetic and depressed? Uh, and I, I don't want you to leave this talk more depressed. I want you to understand what I'm about to say. When you understand that death is democratic, death doesn't know time, space, age, color, creed, beauty, race. Death doesn't understand a good death versus a bad death, a lonely death versus a death with all my family holding my hand, singing me songs. Death doesn't, doesn't care about these things because death is just like, hey, time to go. Just like time to be born. It's just natural life processes. So death is not mean or cruel. It has to occur for life to continue. If the ancestors were still here, here, the Neanderthals and the dinosaurs, we wouldn't be here. You want to be here? Something had to die. What to do? What to do? Right? If you want to lose weight, if you're obese, if you're 300 pounds and you want to lose weight, the obese you has to die. You understand? In spirit. If you want to be in a new career, the old career has to die. So similarly, if the Homo sapien wants to be here, the Homo erecti had to die. And then the dinosaurs had to die. Now what to do? We want to live, but we don't want to die. How can we do that? Then we'd have a mess in the world, which we already do. So the, the moment you are going to surrender, surrender, surrender. And the word surrender, sur, sur, is on, to, on top, like to hand over. And the render is the, ha the handing. Look up the word surrender. It means to hand over, to give over, over. Sur is over and render is hand. So the minute we hand over the delusion of our longevity, then something beautiful happens. Then you realize, what am I doing with my breath right now? What am I doing with this life right now? Then you realize, oh, I've been living dead. I've been living dead. Most of us are living dead. You know it. Most of you are dead to your true selves. Most of you are dead to your courage because you're so scared of losing love from the outside. Most of you are dead to your creativity and passion because you're so afraid of failure. Most of you are to living free because you believe you need to be enslaved. So in death, you want to be free, meaning you want to be free of death, but you don't realize that while you're living, you're living dead. So when you realize that you could die, and this coronavirus has shown us, ah, uh, hello, humans, you could die any moment. Then you stop clinging to the future. You stop trying to predict and control the future. So if you look old, you're like, F it, I look old. If you, if you aren't meeting the love of your life, you're like, F it, I'm here now. You stop wanting to control your present because you want to control your future. It is what it is, what it is. You begin to surrender to what it is and you begin to come alive to the present moment, asking yourself every day, how am I living now? Am I living dead or am I living alive? Just because you're living doesn't mean you're alive. To be alive doesn't mean just to have breath. To be alive means to be in the quest, means to be in the question mark, in the constant unseen and unknown. And this virus for the first time has taken us 
to that absolute place of surrender where we don't know and we cannot see what's next. You're trying to peer into the future, but you can't. And for the first time, it's teaching you, it's this moment to this moment to this moment. All I know is where my feet are right now because I don't know where they, my feet will be 10 steps from now. This in itself is the biggest spiritual teaching to know that you don't know. To know that veering and predicting into the future is absolute insanity. So now you stop trying to control the future. You, all you say is, how can I control the present? To be here right now. So in order to control the present, you need to be awake in the present. Means you need to be alive and fully aware. Now you got to do some work. Now you got to be on your own. Now you got to heal yourself. Now you're, you have to go on an inner quest to, to manage the situation right now. Instead of just controlling life, steering life to the future, you shift the gear and begin living in the present. And now you understand the difference between living and being alive. To be alive means to be whole, here, autonomous, sovereign. Sorry to say, not dependent on others to give you happiness. Sure, they can lend you happiness, but you stop relying on them. You stop desiring them to do that. You stop controlling them to do it. You stop controlling life for the future. You start controlling the aliveness you have in the living moment. So this is how you turn things around. And the mystery of not knowing doesn't debilitate you. It empowers you. The mystery of not knowing doesn't debilitate you. It empowers you. Because when you say, I don't know, you stop trying to control. Therefore, you stop trying to control other people. Therefore, you stop approval, the other's love, the other's endorsement. You stop living for that because you realize you cannot control. And now you begin living for you. For you. Sounds selfish, but it's so not. It's authentic. It's real. It's raw. It's alive. And now you begin to ask, am I living dead or am I living alive? Okay, everyone. I'm going to run off now because I have many things to do, but I just want to remind you that my Luminous Community for Women, sorry guys, it's only for women, is open and it opens only twice a year. It's pinned on top of my Facebook feed, maybe in my Instagram feed too, but in my links. It's a sisterhood of the most incredible women and for just $25 a month. For those of us in the US, that is less than a mani pedi. The reason why I'm reminding people to consider joining is because we see now more than ever the need for a virtual community. But not only just virtual, the need to be in a community where people think like you and, and are of the same courage as you and the same sisterhood and communality as you. And community doesn't mean your family of origin. It so doesn't. It means who you've intentionally invited into your life to be part of your circle. And that's what Luminous is about. So the information is on my website. It's everywhere right now. The doors are open. I'd love for you to join. It's an incredible community and you will meet incredible women. I will see you all 